chores in the morning uh, because then I can spend more time in my with my family in the evenings, but also uh, as a client, I know so eloquently put, if he finds a problem, he has all day to deal with it. I like that versus chores in the evening. Plus, it's nice to just enjoy the sunrise, have a little coffee, and listen to the news, get, get ready for the day. Hi, baby. monitor these cattle looking for signs of illness we're probably uh, 16 or 17 days post weaning now uh, coming up to eat is part of it though not all of it I want to make sure that the cattle have a robust appetite uh, looking for individuals that uh, don't come up to eat uh, that could clue you in that maybe there's something going on but also just a general appraisal of the cattle uh, looking for windshield wiper butts, looking for droopy ears, snot, coughing, uh, that sort of thing. Calves to me that in the early going look like they might be getting sick. Uh, sometimes they just, they look sleepy. Uh, their, their eyes will kind of sag and their ears will sag and they'll kind of hang their head. Um, and there are people a lot more astute than me uh, monitoring health. Uh, that are just really excellent at, at looking at, you know, to see if a calf is off. Uh, cattle are prey animals, so it is their tendency to hide their disease from observers. Um, and so uh, it can be challenging to detect disease in, you know, newly received or weaned type cattle, really cattle in any stage of production. So a guy has to keep, a guy or a gal has to keep a, a close eye on that. To try to monitor and make sure that nobody's going south on you uh, especially on these really cool nights and warm afternoons uh, you can have uh, those temperature swings you know wreak some havoc in the health of the cattle so I always try to keep a really close eye on what so this is a bread heifer that actually goes with that group that we looked at the other uh, and in late July or early August, I found her out of grass, lame on her right hind. Um, I doctor a lot of my uh, illness at grass with remote drug delivery or RDD. Uh, a, you know, that's a fancy way of saying a dart gun, which um, I think actually is better for animal well-being versus driving a lame, you know, 1,900 to 1,100 pound, you know, heifer over really rocky terrain for like a mile and she can't walk. So that's a practical and humane approach to doctoring illness when the cattle are in grass. So she came up lame in August. I doctored her a couple times with darts. I couldn't quite get her turned around. She'd improve and then, and then, uh, get worse and so this went on for a few weeks I finally uh, had her in a place where she was up close to some catch pins one day and I was able to catch her trailer her into the office and I discovered that she had a heel bulb abscess on her right hind so I put a block on her medial or inner toe and then uh, I waited for that to kind of run its course and now she's just locked up here where she doesn't have to exercise too much I'm just hoping to rest her 
you know, with some good rest, kind of hoping that she goes, you know, kind of back to normal. She lost probably 200 pounds. She uh, was really, really lame and ouchy, and, and uh, a byproduct of the RDD was that she got to be kind of fearful of me. So I'm kind of rebuilding some trust with her here and hand feeding her and babying her along. Uh, whenever I bring the heifers home to preg check them, at that time, I think she'll be healthy enough that she's going to go back with the heifers and, and go to grass here for late gestation. So you can see here uh, our bale, the cattle have eaten it down. Every day I try to kind of somewhat pick up some of the stuff around just because I think it improves the hygiene of the pen. Um, it hasn't been really wet or anything, so it hasn't turned into a mud hole yet. But boy, this hay gets gummy and wet and in multiple layers, and, and it can get pretty nasty around these bale rings. So I just try to spend, it takes less than five minutes, I just try to rake some of it up and get it over here to a pile. And then, you know, when it gets to be the weekend, I'll pull the skid steer in here and, and get this pile out of here. And the cattle are going to walk through the pile daily and flatten it out, spread it around. but. It's easier to be a little more proactive about it. I found every day with a little extra effort versus just doing all that on Saturday. These cattle are kind of to a point now where I'm considering bumping up their feed. Uh, just the way they ate uh, was indicative of a strong appetite. I'm not seeing any of the concerning signs uh, that would indicate that they're being overfed. Uh, you know, I dumped out just a little extra for them to see what their appetite was like. And you have, you know, maybe a quarter of the cattle, uh, I guess a fifth of the cattle up here that aren't quite as interested in going up for that remainder, but the others kind of went back to, to try to gather up that light dusting. So um, they may be ready for a slight increase in feed. I guess to be careful uh, during this, you know, VAC 45 or preconditioning period, uh, feeding these things because you can out punt your coverage and feed them too much to where it doesn't pencil uh, as far as your cost of gain what the heavier calves bring all that uh, there's lots of good literature out there about that dilemma but um, you know I, s I certainly want them comfortable I don't want them hungry I've uh, come out here in the middle of the day before and found them all standing around looking at me you know not laying down ruminating and to me that's an indicator that potentially they're hungry or that there's some comfort issue going on where uh, we need to satiate them a little better so I'm just kind of doing this as a test uh, to see what their appetite's like in consideration of maybe bumping them soon. Drop us a line and we'll be happy to visit with you.